all college meeting of the year. So welcome and thanks for coming to them. Today you're uh, going to be wowed by our leadership class. Uh, the event that they sponsored as their class project was an overwhelming success, and I know their presentation is going to be just as good. <laughs> and then, uh, and then a game. How many people recognize the tune as you walked in? What is it? Yay! <laughs> and that's by our financial aid staff. So thank you very much for presenting that. And then we'll conclude with announcements, and Chris will lead that off. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And I'm just going to introduce our leadership class and have them introduce themselves to you. Okay? So come on. Good afternoon, oh, uh, <laughs> and welcome. Um, so, a little quote from John Adams. This is, if your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. So we are uh, the 2017 Leadership Academy Corps, uh, Gloria Basinger, Christina Calderon, Melissa Cunningham, Lisa Holmes, Heather Meinhardt, Denise Pasley, uh, Siri Sator, Eduardo Vasquez, April Yanis, and myself, of course. Uh, um, <laughs> so, yeah, so our, uh, our presentation today uh, is going to give you a snippet of our leadership academy journey, um, the activities that we've, uh, we've done. And then you also hear uh, stories of what we individually and uh, collectively uh, experienced. Um, and then last but not least, we'll talk about our, our leadership class project, which was on the suicide awareness topic that happened on uh, April 26th. Hello, I'm Denise Pasley. Uh, I just wanted to say that um, I had a really great time as part of leadership. Uh, I started here about seven years ago when I was an adjunct, and now I came on full time last year. And as an adjunct, sometimes you don't get to connect well with the college. And so, part of leadership, the reason why I wanted to be on leadership was because I wanted to know more about this little town on the way in Vegas. I had a great time doing uh, a scavenger hunt and working with the, uh, everybody and going to the fort. And we did a lot of great activities. A lot of wonderful people came to speak to us about how to be better leaders. And so I just wanted to say lastly that I, um, out of this, I got um, to get to know all these wonderful people that work in all these different places on campus that I didn't know before. And now I know who they are and where to go to when I need them. <laughs> Hello, my name is Eduardo Vasquez, and uh, I really got a lot out of this Leadership Academy. Uh, I'm a counselor here at the college, and I got to learn about how all the different departments work together. And I think that's a very important part that we don't silo each other, but as a team, we work together for student success. Also, I learned about how important it is how we present ourselves outside of the community, because we're always still representatives of the college. So how we present ourselves outside will definitely affect how it will affect the college. Thank you. As you can see by the diagram, we took a GIST management styles um, exam quiz. And uh, we all came out pretty much spread across the whole uh, gambit of the management styles. Oh, that's an important point because it lets us know that in order to be able to service the students here at Barstow Community College, we need to have several, all different kinds of leadership styles, depending on the kind of work that we're doing. Good afternoon. My name is Gloria Basinger, and um, 
I'm the administrative assistant to Dr. Dabla here at the Student Services. Um, what I found out from being in the Leadership Academy was that I actually got a better understanding of how the college functions as a whole, um, how we all have very different jobs in all the different departments, uh, but they're all equally very important. And um, also, that ultimately, we have one goal, and that is for our students to succeed. Um, an opportunity that I also had by being in leadership academy was that I got to meet these amazing people um, in all different uh, work areas. Uh, some of them are instructors, counselors, managers, and classified. Um, by being to working alongside each other, it gave us an opportunity to make friendships that we wouldn't otherwise make. And I'm grateful for that. Thank you. Um, so, <clears throat> some people want to make it happen, some wish to, some wish it would happen, and others make it happen, Michael Jordan. And so, the good thing about this experience is that we were able to meet a lot of people who make things happen within our community. Um, community leaders range from our district, of course, uh, the Unified School Districts, the City of Barca, but it was also an awesome experience to meet the Region 9 presidents. There's not too many uh, venues or things that you can attend where all Region 9 presidents came out and speak to us. So not only that we got to learn from them, but we also learned about their different leadership styles. Another thing that I learned that was important or that was interesting, uh, we read this book called Leadership and Self-Deception, um, Getting Out of the Box. And I learned that you all, that you all have problems. <laughs> <laughs> we, we all have problems. <laughs> and as a counselor, I see that they're not. <laughs> but there, there's these so-called in-the-box situations where hurts ourselves in the boxes when we see other people as problems. And so the main thing about the book is telling us to understand that there's going to be so-called in-the-box situations that, that we encounter. Are we able to get out of that box and see each other for, for who we really are and to help each other grow, to progress in life, whether it's mentally, physically, and, and, and professionally? Thank you. One of the uh, field trips that we went on was to the Marine Corps Logistic, Logistics Base at Fort Irwin, which was good for me because I'm kind of near the Forest of Area, so I, did, I was always curious to what was going on out there. But we got to uh, meet a couple of the key leaders on the, at each place, and they taught us about their leadership styles. And then one of the, um, the picture here says, what you do every day is important. Marine lives depend on it. So it was kind of a, a nice way to... We all have to work together for student success, but they all have to work together because their lives depend on each other. So it was a good message to take away. Oh, I really need a microphone. I, I think the, the really interesting parts that I took away from it were seeing how other people um, think of leadership and what leadership is, and also really hearing from those region nine presidents. I think that was really interesting, finding out that even at the bigger schools and the smaller schools, we all kind of experience the same problems, um, some of them just on a bigger basis than we do, um, and you know, getting to work with them really great as well. I personally got um, a leadership academy. Um, I got to learn a lot about all the other departments and seeing what everybody else does. Um, it's easy to go around and say, they never work over there, we know what they're doing, you know, we do everything in our department, but that's not true. Everybody else will really work, and then it's nice to see that, that, you know, it's really happening. And it was also good to, uh, we got to meet a bunch of uh, community leaders and, and view their uh, different types of leadership skills, and um, and how they were just like everyone was, and even though they get paid a whole lot more. <laughs> but, uh, and I got to work with all these awesome people, and uh, and everybody's doing we doing that here. Everybody makes the same stuff. Quit, but it's not going to use a robot. Don't go again.
Okay, so both Missy Cunningham and myself are both sort of new to the area, and so one of the, best, the most fun activities about this Leadership Academy was a scavenger hunt. So we work in a community college, so it's important for us to know the community in which we are located at. So we got to go around to different landmarks and local businesses to find out to go through this scavenger hunt activity. Yeah, it was definitely one of the most fun activities we got to do. And uh, just as an added bonus with my group, I had not only learning where things were, but I had a nice history lesson as to when things were built and who owned them and all sorts of stuff. So uh, I actually got a lot out of the, the academy, but one of the, uh, I think the biggest thing for me is, like I said, I'm new to Barstow and the college, and so it, was, it gave me a good overview of you know, the community that I live in now, um, how the organizations work, the governance structure, all of that good stuff. And then the college, the internal um, workings as well. I got to meet some really great people and become part of the community, but also part of the team, which is helpful. And I also learned on the scavenger hunt not only where everything was, but that my driving is too slow. According to my group <laughs> member, <laughs> Heather, who fired me after the first stop. So. <laughs> My name is Terry Sutter. I'm a student services technician out of Port Irwin. And I enjoyed this year's Leadership Academy because I got to listen to a lot of different prominent leaders in our community, which in turn made me want to become one. Um, and I also got the opportunity to see how all the different departments here on campus interrelate, which helps me to better understand and appreciate how our college works. On one of our trips, uh, we went out to CTE. We spent the whole day there, and they fed us. Okay. Gave us a tour of um, all, all that they do there. And uh, it was really quite fun. This is a picture of me doing some hands-on, um, balancing a tire. So we really enjoyed that. Thank you. Hi, I'm Missy Cunningham. I teach administration of justice here. Um, and I'm pretty sure I'm one of the newest, if not the newest, uh, BCC member to be able to participate in this year's uh, Leadership Academy. Um, and what I know is when I first got here, where I was most comfortable is inside the classroom. Inside that building, I knew what I was doing. I knew how to reach the students. I knew how to talk to them. I knew how to get them engaged. But when I left, I had no idea what was going on. Um, there are all sorts of different buildings. I wasn't sure who worked in what and what was going on inside them. So what Leadership Academy did uh, was help me connect uh, what the services are with the actual building and who to go to with questions. And lastly, it also gave me a head start on getting to know um, a lot of great people starting this group right now. Um, this was a very rewarding experience going through the Leadership Academy, but um, the thing that I took out most was that um, a lot of our sessions had to do with what everybody and what departments do, what tasks around college. And sometimes I think that as a college as a whole, we don't appreciate what every other department has to do. The breadth of the um, knowledge that they have to have, the amount of work that goes into everything that they do, and some of us have really no idea what other departments do, and so we can't have an appreciation for those other departments if we don't understand what they're doing. And so it was a really great presentation that we had, and that was really what I got out of it, is having that great appreciation for all of the other departments, being able to work together as a team with everybody else, how it impacts my job and how my job impacts theirs. And so learning all of that really helps me to be able to work as a team better with everybody else throughout the college. I also, of course, got to know <laughs> all of the people in the Leadership Academy team, and it was a really, really great experience. Thank you. Um, one of the things for Leadership Academy to ensure that we work as a team is having that team project. And all of us from the beginning, the very first day, all the way till the end, we had to work together in order to say, what do we want the project to be? How can we make a difference at the college? Um, also, when we were planning our project, what, who's going to do what? What work is going to be disseminated according to each person's abilities and um, their strengths? So we did have a lot of um, team working sessions, both at Leadership Academy and um, at our own time as well. 
So, so our, our class project was a suicide awareness talk that happened on April 26th in this, in this lobby here. But uh, like Christina was mentioning, I mean, there was a lot of groundwork that was placed into it. Um, classroom presentations, um, flyers around campus and the community. Um, I thought it was great to see that um, via social media, I mean, we were able to uh, send out over 1,100 uh, uh, invites. So pretty much if you stayed in the high desert anywhere, within the high desert community, um, you were somewhat uh, formally or informally invited. And so uh, MFTI alum Axel, uh, Axelrod from uh, Victor Community Support Services, uh, she's a registered trainer for ASIST, uh, A-S-I-S-T. Uh, it stands for Applied Suicide Intervention Skills Training. So she was able to come out and at the event, over 132 attendees were, were present and they were able to get a lot of valuable in, in information um, and were, were also engaged at the event. If you think about it as well, um, um, Chris was able to um, live stream it, um, or unofficially, I, I think several individuals were able to view um, the event as well uh, through live stream. And so, and then there, were, there was also, to, to this day, I think it came out there today, um, the Daily Press, uh, there was a news feed uh, saying that uh, shattering suicide secrets, uh, secrecy in Barcelona. So, I mean, there was a lot of positive feedback. And the main, our main goal was to continue the conversation um, to improve or increase the awareness and promote resources not only in Barstow, Fort Irwin, but in the high desert on, on uh, suicide. So, um, as you walked in, there was actually a business card um, that had our link on. And that link is actually uh, posted on our, our college website for anyone to access this series. So part of our project was to compile resources that weren't previously available on our website. And um, now they can be found under health services under the Consumers Affairs link from the homepage. And what we did on this uh, list was basically just uh, highlight the those um, links that are for resources that are, would help you with suicide intervention or prevention. And so this is just a uh, uh, it was just picture the, of, of the event of, of, of the individuals who attended. Okay, there you go. And so again, 132 <coughs> people, including those who viewed it via live stream. And we would like to thank the Lucian Academy. We'd like to thank all the mentors, Dr. Thomas, um, Clint, Penny, and everybody else that um, helped participate with us in this program. We would like to thank you. Graduation ceremony will be on May 12th from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. here in the uh, uh, in the black box. In the black box, yes. Okay, so I'll stay here for just a minute. And Clint and Penny, I, I don't know if you want to come up, but come up if you want to. Okay. So this is the third year of the President's Leadership Academy, and I'd like the people who participated in the past to stand up because we had. We had uh, great classes from the inaugural class to the uh, middle class, middle child, to the, <laughs> to the youngsters. <laughs> uh, thank you all. So give yourselves a hand, all of you. I'm going to tell on Clint, because at the end of the year, it's a lot of work, and at the end of the year last year, he came in and said, I, I don't know, I don't think I want to do this anymore. And I said, just, you know, wait a minute, talk to me a little bit later. And we came in to the leadership classes presentation. And as we were walking out, Clint said, I take it back. <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> so um, you inspire us every year. But you guys, you uh, the way that you work together throughout the year and the way that you um, accept every challenge that we give and thrive and work, you know, just it's amazing to see the growth from the beginning of the class to the end of the class. 
especially in the camaraderie. The first class we walk in and everybody's quiet and nobody's saying much. By the last class, we can't even get the class started because <laughs> everybody's such good friends. And the projects, we give very little direction at the beginning of the academy. We just say it has to, there's no money for it unless you find some existing uh, funds in the college. You have to work together on it. And it has to be something that's either good for the college or the community or both. And each year, the projects have just been outstanding. The first year, there was a need that um, Wendy kind of made clear to the class about grabbing the attention of the uh, high school students and other outreach efforts. And so the class created an amazing video. The second year, the class uh, identified an issue that we didn't really have a good um, hiring uh, manual for employees, yeah, like an or an orientation manual, and um, they created that. And we're in the final stages of just finishing that up, and then this year, I think probably based on some of the things that have happened in the community, the class started talking about a need, and totally without our help at all, all three classes just did an amazing job of meeting a need and working together to do that. So. Huge hand for you for that. So I hope this is a is a tradition that continues. We brought Penny on this year, knowing that there were changes coming, and so Penny and Clint uh, have all of the materials and can make sure that the President's Leadership Academy can continue. We did uh, decide that we were going to take a year off and do it every other year. So when it becomes available in the future, I hope some of you who haven't done it yet will apply. It goes all year, but it's it's on Fridays once a once a month on a Friday, and it goes from about eleven to to the end of the day. That all of that could change, but the point of it is you really get to know how the college works, and you have a chance to get to know amazing people in other departments and develop a respect for each other and for what we do in the community and the partners that we work with in the community. So again, thank you all so much. And you did a wonderful job this year. You were an amazing class as usual. So the classes have all been amazing. So thank you all. Be sure to come to their graduation. It's our chance to celebrate them. OK? 1 to 3, May 12th, right here. Now, we have another amazing department, our financial aid staff is going to present. Hello. For those of you who don't know, I'm Wendy Hecker. I work in financial aid. Bless you. This is Crystal. She's our VA student worker. And that's Tanessa Tinley. She works in financial aid as well. Um, Heather Robbins really wanted to be here. She was really kind of the brainchild of this whole game. Um, but she, unfortunately, she's sick, so she couldn't be here with us today. Um, but we're going to have a little fun. We're going to play Jeopardy. So first of all, I need you guys to divide into three teams. So maybe this row, this row here. And then this team here, and then here. This is easy. Okay. <laughs> you already did it. Good job. <laughs> so we got three teams. We're good there. All right. So Crystal's going to. Crystal will keep points because the winning team, there are prizes in this here backpack, and we have some uh, little prizes for the non winners as well. Um, for anybody who's never played Jeopardy! Um, you have to answer the question in a form of a question, so keep that in mind. Um, we're going to have to, we don't have buzzers or clickers, so we kind of have to go by whoever raises their hands first. So that's why Crystal's here, too, to kind of be my eyes. So we'll do our best to see who was first, but it's going to be a little difficult to do. So you're not yet. You can't just keep your hand raised the whole time either. No. <laughs> um, Okay, I'm gonna Your buzzers are locked team out. One. So go ahead and put team one. We'll put Gloria. Team one. Team two back there. I see Michelle Henderson. So are you all on the line? Yeah. Okay. Where's my break? Behind Eduardo. 
Yeah, so that's the entire leadership classroom. Jessica, are you in Leadership Academy? No. Okay. So, yeah. And then Sandy over here. So, All right, so to see who goes first, I'm going to pick a number and I'm going to tell it to Crystal, and then you all need to, each team needs to pick a number. One through what? One through ten. One through ten. Five. Eight. 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 Four. It's four. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead and go to the board. Oh, first of all, our categories. It is not just a financial aid, Jeopardy game. It is student services. So Jeopardy is student services. Okay. Okay. So it's not just a financial aid Jeopardy game. It's student services. So your categories are special programs and services, financial aid 101, admissions and records, transfer center and athletics, student success and equity, counseling and student life. And then here we go. All right, so over here, which question category would you like first? Students are required to have blank by the time they complete 15 units, and they are also required to have an updated blank once they have completed 45 units. Remember, answer in the form of a question. <laughs> Whose hand was first? <laughs> was it Heather? Okay, Heather. Will we Yay. accept education plan without comprehensive? No. <laughs> 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 that is a good point. Right. Who wants to be my judge on that? <laughs> okay. Dr. Dr. Natalis, you say? Okay. No point. No point. Okay. All right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, since you guys did try to guess, we'll let you pick the next one. Okay. Go ahead, pick the next. Uh, you guys can pick the next category. <laughs> She's on you now. England. Watch hands. Watch her. I like that. Let's just throw that out there. <laughs> Then one of the services that the OPS offers. <laughs> yes. Access. Access. Oh. <laughs> that is true. I. You say Tanisha. Is both vouchers? Yep. Correct. A thousand. A thousand. All right, so you guys go ahead and pick the next category. Name the golden four courses for CSU transfer. I see your hand. Penny? Counselors on our team, and they're going to make you a Okay, Let's let Penny do it. What is Change Transfer Level 1 in my What is Political Science? How many we have? It's four. <laughs> I'm not sure how much is going on here. So, math 
That's it. So English, math, and speech. Okay. Okay, go ahead. I heard political science. No. <laughs> we didn't say. Did you say quantitative reasoning? Yeah, nope. <laughs> <laughs> they did not say math. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and pick the next category. <laughs> Quickly. This color honor cord represents the highest honors received at Barstow Community College. Team three? Team three. Back here. Yes. Team three. <laughs> what is red? Forgiveness after 125 20 qualifying payments are made while working in specific fields. Eduardo? What is the public forgiveness loan program? Eduardo, go ahead and pick the next category. <laughs> Title V regulations specify that colleges must review and address the following populations for disproportionate impact in their student equity plans. American Indians or Alaskan Natives, Asians or Pacific Islanders, Blacks, Hispanics, Whites, men, women, and persons with disabilities. The State Budget Trailer Bill SB 860-2014 added requirements to address these additional groups. What are the additional groups? I saw Penny's hand, but she's kind of. <laughs> Did you raise your hand? Did I see you have your hand up? Yeah, I raise my hand every time. Apparently, I have. Apparently, I have blinders to you because I feel like, oh man, this means more work for me. So, okay, Penny. <laughs> Foster groups and veterans. What is foster youth veterans and low income students? That's a no. Where's my Heather would say no. She's my judge. They didn't they missed that third one all together, so yeah. No point. But you guys can pick the next category. Penny, go ahead and pick the next category. Counseling is the California Community College Scholastic Honor Society? Team three. What again, James? There's two. No. But you can pick the next category. <laughs> Name one program that is housed in special programs and services. <laughs> Christina cannot answer. <laughs> <laughs> Your hand was up first, so go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. What is access? Oops. Yep. Yep. Yay. Yep. And Christina didn't even have to answer. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and the next category. Okay. Um, let's go with transfer and transfer center and athletics for eight hundred. Ooh, picture question. <laughs> 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 oh, look at that. Uh, I think Heather forgot to Trainer. finish working on that. <laughs> go ahead Who is? Go ahead and do the answer. Know the answer. Who is? Or back to board. 
Yeah, I think you're going to get a chance to finish. Go ahead and pick another one. Okay, so emissions are working great. Okay, so in summer 2017, the non resident tuition rate is going up to. Sean? What's 186? No. Oh. <laughs> we'll allow we'll still. Do you have an answer? 234. <laughs> this program offers grants up to five thousand to eligible foster youth. That is correct. All right. Pick another category. It helps uh, to know a little bit of everything, huh? <laughs> Go ahead, pick your next category. This one's fun. I can't read it like that. <laughs> The Student Success and Equity Committee is a shared governance entity. The committee assists the college in planning and implementing the Blake Plan. Penny's hand. Okay, Penny. <laughs> wait, what did you say? You didn't answer in the form of a question. Yes, you did. <laughs> Glenn says you did. Um, <laughs> Okay. Go ahead and pick your next category. <laughs> Administration of justice, art, history, political science, and sociology are all this type of program. <laughs> Yeah. Next category. The fog fee waiver waves this <laughs> online. Alright, Shawnee, you want to pick the next category? Oh, okay. Uh, services for 600. What in services? Programs. There we go. Students are requesting, who are requesting accessibility accommodations through the college must complete this first. For an what is an application? What is an application? Christina, <laughs> this is your department, so <laughs> go ahead and give them the next category. Photography, welding, and cosmetology are all examples of Barstow Community College's what? <laughs> Everybody <Yes>. <laughs> Yeah, woo! And 
pick the next category. That's the only 600 left. Okay. The award-winning mobile platform that delivers free nudge notifications to students to help them keep track of our social community college deadline. Or... <coughs> James or Dr. Gadaboy, either one. Yep, 600. Now we're down to four. <laughs> all right. Oh, so all the purple ones. Purple, yeah. we okay. haven't done yet. Okay. All right, next category. Uh, and blank blank is defined as a student who has entered the United States temporarily and solely for the purpose of study and who has a permanent residence in another country that he or she has no intention of abandoning. Was it Heather? Okay, you need to raise your hand high. <laughs> Dr. Dadaboy. <laughs> Yay! Uh, go ahead and pick the next category. An online student transfer information system that shows how course credits earned at one public California college or university can be applied when transferred to another. James? Over here? James? What is the sinners? <laughs> <laughs> I like how it was kind of trailing off, but we're going to go for it. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and pick the next category. And it was. <laughs> The Dean of Student Success and Equity on Campus. Over here. April had it first. Oh, it's Tanya. Well, well, I think right now she's only Tanya, right? Uh, <laughs> now like not anyway. <laughs> All right, Dr. Tanya. All right, go ahead and pick your next category. Um, Name three faculty advisors and their respective clubs. April. And they are all three on there. So Woo -hoo! Go ahead and pick the next category. Um, Provides jobs for undergraduate students with financial need, allowing them to earn money to help pay education expenses. Dr. Gadaboy? All right. <laughs> Go ahead and pick your next category. The Blake program assists eligible vocational students majoring in an approved vocational program. Team three. What is Lucy Yay! Two under what now? Yeah. We have only two hundred. We're only down to two hundred. The EOPS acronym stands for this. Shauna. 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 <laughs> Christina, would you like to steal? Go ahead. Yes. The question format's like killing everybody now. I know. Go ahead and pick the next uh, category. Christina. Um, that's <laughs> This is the newest sport coming to Barstow Community College. Yes. Yeah. I, I said yes before the answer came up, but yes. <laughs> Go ahead and pick the next category. Um, 
Active duty military veterans, foster youth, EOPS access, and CalWORKs always receive this first. Me too. Thank you. Who, was, who had their hand up? Penny. Penny? Okay. Janie, Penny? Either one. What is priority registration? That is correct. And then go ahead and pick the last one? No, we have three more. Three okay. more. Go ahead and pick one. The blank is distributed every third Thursday of every month from 1 to 3 p.m. at C110B for hungry students. Christina. Christina. Correct. Go ahead. Two left. To maintain a good SAP, satisfactory academic progress, students must maintain a 2.0 GPA and also. Christina. That is correct. And then last one. The Student Success and Support Program 3SP was formally. Kushner. Was Kushner? Dr. that one? Yay! All right, so we're going to add the points up and we're going to see the one. And then we're going to do Final Jeopardy. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, yeah so, so give them their points and they have to wager. Okay. I know it's just some outreach items in that backpack. Don't reach the Just wait till I pull out like a PS4 or something. <laughs> <laughs> I work for Heather, I don't want to hear about this every day. <laughs> Total points right now are 6,600. Team two, you have 4,200. And team three, you have 5,600. Team one, how much do you want to wager? All of it. Team two? All of it? Okay. So everybody's going to be easy points. Okay. Now everybody gets the. Yeah, they get to questions. answer that. Everybody gets to answer yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't play Jeopardy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
everybody had the same answers, but you guys had the most points, so you wagered your points and you ended up with the most points. Yeah. So let's get to the prizes. Everybody got it right, but they had already had the most points, and when they doubled, it gave them more points. Yes, everybody had it correct. Okay. So our winning team gets some varsity college day packs, and then we have pens and hand sanitizers for everybody else. Wonderful party gift. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for playing. <laughs> Hi, good afternoon. This Sunday, May 14, we have special guests that will be here at the Performing Arts Center Main Theater. They are a group called Just Like That. They are a girls trio singing the harmonies of the 40s and the 50s, like the Lennon Sisters, the McGuire Sisters. They're also bringing a nine-piece band, and they have performed in Vegas. They have performed in Laughlin alongside Bob Hope. These are pros. So we would love it if you would uh, consider please coming to this and uh, supporting events at the PAC so we can continue having things like this. All right, uh, 11 days on the 14th. Mother's Day, bring mom. So just a review of some of the upcoming events because we have a lot of them. Uh, tomorrow night, Wednesday night, we have a concert from our jazz and uh, concert band. Um, performance is at 7 o'clock and admission is free. free. So come, cheap day. Wonderful thing. On Thursday, May 4th, we have two events happening, National Day of Prayer, which is at 11 a.m. It's, it's here. At what time? 7 o'clock. National Day of Prayer, 7 p.m. 3 p.m. on the 4th. 7. Thursday. I'm sorry. And also, on May 4th, we have Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, May the 4th be with you. <laughs> <laughs> but at any rate, <laughs> that one's at 11.30. So, and that's behind the Student Services Building lunch. It is available for, I think it's a dollar for ASG card holders and three dollars if you don't have one. Then we have Honors Day. This is the reason that Cinco de Mayo wasn't on the 5th this year. Because we have our Honors Day ceremony at 6 p.m. here in the PAC. Uh, that's where the students are given their scholarships. So everybody's invited to that. On May 12th, we have our Student Recognition Day. Uh, that's actually a couple of different things combined this year. It's our regular Student Recognition Day, plus we're having the Athletic Awards at the same ceremony. So that one is at uh, 11.30 as well. So it's actually before the graduation ceremony. Yeah, it may conflict a little bit. Also on May 12th, <laughs> so, the College Choir and Broadway Voice Performance, their spring concert, is on the 12th at 7 p.m. And admission to that is $3 uh, for students and children and seniors and $5 for adults without student status. Then we have the Notoriety Variety Show on May 13th at 7.30. That's here. 
you just heard about Just Like That, um, which is on Sunday, May 14th at 2, 2 p.m. We have our commencement exercises coming up. Commencement, the rehearsal is on May 18th at 2 p.m. And then Friday the 19th, commencement starts at 3. The photos for those events are happening beforehand, though, so if you're in, if you're a faculty or a staff member or uh, anybody that's having their photo taken, you have to do that beforehand. And then, last but not least, we also have a our summer youth program that's starting on June 5th. The applications are now open, and my understanding is they are about half full already. So, if you have uh, kids, what are the age groups on that, James? Fifth, fifth through eighth grade. So if you have students that are fifth through eighth grade, make sure they're signed up for the summer program. Um, it's not a college event. This is what I was saying. Astromatics is organizing both the National Day of Prayer this year and then the And lastly, before we break up, we have a couple of kudos. Um, one um, to the Student Services and Wendy for what a great game today. And that needs to go, you know, the kudos needs to extend to Dr. Thomas for holding all these all college meetings for the last couple of years and making them interactive. I think that that's extremely important and I'm glad that you're here. I don't believe you took the opportunity to introduce our new Vice President. I would like to introduce to everybody our Vice President of Administrative Services, Brenda Finley. Welcome. And the first all-college uh, meeting in early September will be your agenda, so you need to think of it. No, <laughs> and we expect it to be this fun, so great. Um, I'd like to, uh, Sandy, stand up and who got um, recognized yesterday down at the CTU Regional? Todd Barclow for Teacher of the Year, uh, Richard Brennan for Leadership, and Kel Portman for Partnership, which they've given them a job to our students and make the great honors matter. So, so those folks are recognized yesterday at the Region 9 CTE of Conference. Um, to uh, kudos to Mike Moros from Ed Will. Mike's work on connecting the PAC sound boards, both the main theater and the black box, to um, Ed's iPad, so sound can be adjusted from anywhere in the theater. You rocked Mike. And from Amy Ross, uh, I just wanted to give a huge, give some huge kudos to my students. Tonight was strike for Hello Dolly, and my students are awesome. The theater is so clean. I even had several students go row by row in the auditorium to clean the seats. They found nine seats with gum on them. They even had to clean up what looked like throw up or worse. And I'm glad that Danny, the custodian for the building, didn't have to deal with that. The costume shop, the dressing rooms, the green room, including the refrigerator, the scene shop, the booth, the stage, it all looks so wonderful. My students have a deep, deep respect for this theater, and I wanted to let you know. Thank you, everybody.